Today is Saturday, December 10th. We're getting ready to leave and go out for family dinner. This is a tradition that Paul and I started in 2019, where we take all of the kids out to a nice dinner out, a little bit out of town, not, not, in, like, not in the county we live in, but in another county where there's a little bit more selection of establishments to dine at. And then we go to a Christmas light show and walk around. It's really busy and bustling with holiday cheer. We get a family picture and we just make it an, it an enjoyable evening. We are getting ready to leave to do that. But tomorrow, which will be Sunday, December 11th, we are hosting a little family get together. I have a niece who she and her husband and three kids are visiting from around the Atlanta, Georgia area. We have not seen them in years. They are staying with my mom and I said perfect timing because we were already scheduled to get together with all of the kids for our sugar cookie frosting and decorating day. So all the Christmas cookies for the season are prepared. I've been sharing that on Instagram stories. Last Yesterday in the morning, I made the sugar cookie dough and last night, Kirsten baked all of the cookies so that tomorrow we just can frost them and decorate them. But we have about 21 of us that will be here. My second daughter, Haley, flew in from New York, well, I'll say Boston. She actually went into Boston Thursday night to go to her boyfriend's. They had a Christmas party last night. So they, I just checked her location and they are at the airport. Carly is picking Haley and her boyfriend Vin up. And Carly's boyfriend Jackson, who is in the military, flew in right behind Haley and Vin, and he was coming from North Carolina. So Haley and Vin flew in from Boston. Jackson flew in from, um, wow, is that an eagle? Sorry, <laughs> I just got distracted. <laughs> I think it is. Is that an eagle out there? Huh, something is out there. It's out like right outside of the, like just inside the, the woods? What is that? It's almost like it's injured. What? Right now it's not moving. Oh, it's a, a big hawk eagle. And oh. He, oh, you must have killed something. Oh. <laughs> well, wow. we, we're taking yeah. you along. A hawk or some hawk eagle, whatever. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction. <laughs> um, I'm not in my filming room and I'm just holding my camera, so or my phone. Anyway, where are we? So they flew in from Boston, Jackson flew in from North Carolina, Carly's picking them up. They have a couple of hours before they meet us for dinner and then we do dinner out and then Paul and I are going to hit an Irish pub, a wine bar and a um, oyster bar with Haley and Vin later tonight. So it'll be a late night and then tomorrow I have people coming over between 11 and 11.30, but we ordered all of the food. Anyway, the house is all set up for tomorrow's gathering. So I'm just gonna take you a walk through. We're also gonna be celebrating Chloe's birthday. Her birthday is actually two weeks, or no, I'm sorry, one week from yesterday. So when this video publishes, Chloe will have already had her birthday and turned 17. Her birthday was on the 16th, but because I'm filming this early, you get it all. So it'll be a late night, early morning, but it's really chill tomorrow, very casual. But I'm gonna take you through a walkthrough of just how I have everything set up. I will have in the description box other videos that are similar to this that I share the setup of how I do things preparing for parties. It just varies depending on how casual to how formal we're getting. Tomorrow's real casual. So I just decided to take you along because I know you guys enjoy this, these types of videos. So without further ado, let's dive in before this video gets way too long, but I can't believe we are, when this video publishes, we are I think in the week of Christmas. So hopefully you can pick up some 
tips and ideas or maybe inspiration or motivation uh, for your Christmas Eve or Christmas Day if you are hosting. So, all right, let's take a peek. This is the entrance to our house from the garage because it will be immediate family. Uh, I do have a niece and her husband and their three kids coming, but everyone's going to want to come in through the garage, not the front door. So this is where they will enter. The last thing that I want to happen is to clog up this area right here with coats and shoes because this is a central hallway and the powder room happens to be right here. So if you have 21 people and you have coats and shoes, you can imagine what this is gonna look like. I try to prevent that and that's where planning ahead comes in. So if I'm standing where people will enter, over here to my right, this is our laundry room. I set up a garment rack and put hangers on the garment rack so that people can hang up their coats and then down here, I actually have a shoe shelf and I have a mat where people can put their shoes. The goal is to keep the house tidy so that traffic, especially when you have little ones toddling around, you don't have to worry about anyone getting hurt. So again, we keep the aisleway free. Going into the kitchen, We will be doing sugar cookie decorating tomorrow. So the island will pretty much be occupied making the frosting and the royal icing. I don't want any of the food to be set up out here just because there's gonna to be too much traffic. So the kitchen will pretty much be like this. What always happens is the women always congregate around the center island. I do have an additional stool in the pantry that I can put between those two stools just because this ends up being an area where the women tend to visit. Over here is where I plan on putting or having the holiday Prosecco punch. So I am all set up and prepared. I will put this bottle of Prosecco sparkling wine on ice tomorrow to chill it to prepare. I don't need a really big batch, so I'm not using my punch bowl, which I love. This is actually a soup, like a soup dish. So I'm just gonna use this. But I am preparing the ice ring, which is a gradual process. You can get to my punch on the website along with all of my other recipes. I will probably just top this off with a little bit more water, but you can just set a reminder or a timer to every couple of hours add to it. Here is our view. Now this table will be used for people to sit at and eat as well as the banquet tables that are set up out there. I plan to remove the decor from this circular wood centerpiece and put all of the cookie sprinkles and decorations on there. I'm hoping to get most of the cookie decorators sitting out at this table uh, because it's a nice square table and then they will have access to everything that they need, but it'll be up to them. It's very important when you're hosting to have plenty of garbage. We have two of these units. They are wonderful to have on hand for outdoor or outside parties that you throw or inside. I just, this has been such a great thing because they're nicer looking and they just get plenty of use. So we have two of those and I have the other one in a different location. Chloe is opening a cheese right now, so you may hear some noise in the background. Over here we have the drink station. So we have this beverage bucket that is probably 20 years old. I will try to link a couple. Uh, beverage bucket will be full of ice with several different drinks in there, can pop, 
Uh, there's some Hawaiian punch for the kids. And then this bucket right here, I plan to fill with ice that people can use to fill their cups. We have a couple of, I don't think they're two liters. I don't know how big those are, one liters. I have a Sharpie set out that's always important so people can put their name on their cup. We'll have to watch that with Bug because she'll be scribbling on everything. I also have these bottles of water in the refrigerator. I will set these out on the tables and they'll get, they'll get to be room temperature, which is fine because I have ice if people want it. But I will set them out on the tables. Over here, we have the dessert table. I will be putting cookies on the platters. I like using various heights and different platters. So I will probably put maybe like peanut butter balls in there or holly globs. I'll try to show you once the party is all together, but it really just depends on time. I whipped up a batch of my puppy chow this morning. I'm going to put a little bit of small little sprinkle, chocolate sprinkle type things on top just for decoration in the morning. I also have these candy dishes on the table that I will fill with these frosted holiday tree pretzels. Always nice to have something on the table. I set up a couple of these poofs just in case we need additional seating or someone wants to sit low, but it's actually where I'm going to have people put Chloe's uh, birthday presents because I really didn't want to put a whole table up there. After she's done opening her gifts, I can take those poofs and put them in the home office so that they're out of the way to create more space. I decided to set up the buffet out in the foyer, so you aren't able to use the foyer door right now, but Paul always likes when we can make it happen where people can go through the line on both sides. And I would say once you get to around 20 people, that is really nice. Otherwise, you just have people waiting in line. We are doing plastic plates for this party. These are one of my favorite. I get them at Gordon's Food Service and I like the black. I also like clear. If you watch my recent video on family dinners, I talk about what I look for in a disposable plate. While I do have some plastic wear in there, I also have regular silverware, just in case, depending on what people eat, they want regular. And I always set out hand sanitizer. Of course, we have napkins. And this is what's key, is you don't want to be setting this up the day of the party. You want to do everything a couple of days prior because if you find you're out of something, you need to have time to run and get it. I have the burner sitting out that will go under the chafing dishes. I still need to put some water in here that will go under the party pans that I have ordered. I will do that in the morning and I have it on a list. So important to have your list. Also, you'll want to make sure that you have serving pieces on both sides if you're going to have two lines. Always leave a little space in between where people can put their plate. I talked about that in my family dinner video. And post-it notes are key so that you don't forget to set something out. I have a bowl of grated Parmesan ready to go, so I have that post-it note sitting out. I also have a post-it note over here that says barbecue sauce because I am going to set out an additional bowl in case anyone wants extra barbecue sauce on their ribs. Now this is an ice table to keep your cold food on ice. I, I have to put the skirt on it yet. You can see the skirt is folded up right there and there's some tape. And I already have sitting out 
a lighter to light the burning, the, the little burners. It's really important that you have a reminder or a timer set to start your water plenty early. I think about 30 minutes prior, you're gonna wanna light those burners and get that water boiling so when you put your pans on there, they can heat up. So the table will get filled with ice and then as ice melts, it will drain into that five gallon pail. That's why you want to skirt your table. I also have a skirt for the dessert table, but I'm not gonna worry about that. And then I'm backing into my home office. I try to keep additional things I may need in here. I have a really nice shaving dish, so I don't know, I may use that. I also have a round one over here that I may use as well. They're both clean and ready to go, that's key, because when Paul picks up the party pans tomorrow, I'm not sure how everything is gonna be set up. I know the masacholi and the chicken alfredo, but you wanna be prepared. Over here, you'll see that I have another garbage. Very important to have a couple, make it easy for your guests to see. The other thing that I do that's such a nice added touch is I have a diaper changing station right here. So this unit is foldable, it's really nice to have. I don't want anyone laying a baby on my bed, nor do I want a dirty diaper on my bed. So I have a changing station right here, a couple of toys, a little disposable diaper mat that can be thrown away for where their bottom is gonna go. And then I put a little hook, like an S hook, and these are the diaper sacks that you put a dirty diaper in. They come in like a box and they actually have like a lavender scent. So this is all ready to go because June will be utilizing this. And then Bo, my niece's little one who is younger than June. And then I have a garbage where they can throw the dirty diapers in, some wipes, some hand sanitizer, and then another book. So really making everything easy access for your guest is so important. And this is where I'm just really good and I'm really strong. And a lot of this is just years and years of experience. Here's a view from this angle. And that's Chloe out there. Are you having leftover cheeseburger soup? Yeah, I bet. It's her favorite. It's what I made for dinner last night. You're looking at our recently updated, or I should even say moved, guest bedroom slash nursery. So the other nice thing is we have two places to lay a baby down. We have a crib here. I also, let me just say this, I have a video coming out where I'm gonna do a walkthrough of this room. So I will have links to everything in that video. But Haley and her boyfriend, Vin, they fly in in a couple of hours on the day that I film this video for our family dinner out. So the room is all ready for them. I do want to add in the guest room a little picture frame with the Wi-Fi, how to get logged, or the Wi-Fi code or whatever, but Haley and Vin already have that programmed in their phone. But I did set up over here some water and a couple of glasses for them and then a couple of coasters as well so that they can put their water glasses on a coaster. They both have iPhones, so I already have a charger on both sides of the bed. And Vin just celebrated his birthday and he's only gonna be in overnight. So he won't be here for Christmas, Haley will. And since he just had a birthday and we won't see him for Christmas, I have his gift inside that envelope along with a Christmas card, our family card. We got him a gift card to a place that he enjoys shopping at. So if you have guests staying, it's really important to make their stay lovely and to have their room ready to go. It also helps to have another space. This is a really generous walk-in closet for that bedroom. I do need to grab some hangers and put in here, but 
There's extra sheets and blankets. Towels. Feminine hygiene. Makeup remover wipes. Just little necessities or shampoo and conditioner, a hairbrush, some dry shampoo, towels and washcloths. I even have some books up there, which I think is really nice. And if anyone stays here and has a baby, we have plenty of stuff for little ones since they could be sleeping up here. Some more items down there. And then extra pillows right here. If you're wondering what this is, we have two of these. One in this spare bedroom closet and one in Pips's, and that's a fire safety ladder that you would, if you had a fire upstairs, you would hook that on your window and climb down. And there's our car seat that we need to put in our car. I will also, I have an ironing board in here and an iron. I will also bring up a table and chair because Haley will be home for the whole holiday season and she will be working remotely and she will probably work right up here from her room. Here's a little view from up above. Don't forget to check out my highlights, Christmas 2021 from last year, where you'll get to see some different views of last year's Christmas if you want to get more ideas and inspiration.